Hello, I'm Thomas Cuisse, and it's my pleasure to have with me Dr. Chi Tang Cheng from Singapore to discuss about the impact of the DAPT study on the practice in Asia. And you had in Asia this year a nice session to discuss the clear impact of the DAPT study on practice in Asia. And you also recently published the report of this session in Asia Intervention Journal. So please could you share with us uh, what came from and what were the key message from the session and the overall publication? Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Thomas, for that, uh, for that intro. So as you said, this year um, at Asia PCR, we had the, uh, I believe, the first ever how will this trial impact upon my practice session? And uh, we chose the DAP study to, uh, to be um, the trial in question. So it was, it was a great session, actually. Um, nice panel full of experts from not only Asia, but also Europe, Australia. And so we really had a kind of global presence to discuss this study. Um, and, and the format was similar to what has been done before at PCR, but with a bit of an Asian twist to it. So first we had um, a nice case introduction just to give everyone a clinical scenario. And then we went through the uh, hit, so-called headline results of the trial, and then really a, a dive deep into the, the results and then uh, a discussion. And I think that, that was the, the meat of the thing. But what to me was uh, really very interesting was um, we did a poll before we started the, uh, the whole session of the audience, and this was, you know, this was a big audience um, of Asian interventionists, about asking them, firstly, you know, how will the DAP study impact upon their, their practice? And the way we wanted to do this was, firstly, we asked them, what's your practice now? And then right at the end, after we had gone through all these things, then we asked them, how have, the, have things changed? And uh, it was fascinating, actually. So what we got from the audience was that, uh, you know, the DAP study, before DAP study came out, most of them were actually giving prolonged dual antiplatelet therapy for actually 12 months, and some even going indefinitely. We had three choices, one less than 12 months, one more um, about more than 12 months, stop at 30, and then the next one was indefinitely or kind of case by case. And about half-half, you know, the, the latter two choices. Very different from our panel of experts who are, in a way, more conservative, shorter uh, dual antiplatelet duration. Uh, but after the session, uh, strangely or not so strangely, we didn't change anyone's opinion. People stayed pretty much the same. So I can say from, from you know, that audience, uh, the Asian practice seems to be uh, longer duration of dual antiplatelet therapy. I don't know, okay. maybe as we digest the results a bit more, th this may change, yeah. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. And following this session, what do you think will be in the next, as you say, we yeah. need some time yeah. uh, to digest the study and to see how it will apply in our, in our yeah. practice. Yeah. How do you see this study be implemented in the Asia practice for yeah. the APT after, after yeah. this, in the following years? Yeah. I, I, think that's the key pay, I, I think that's the key point that you've made, you know, which is uh, the, the Asian context. Because I think what also came out from that session is that you know, maybe the Asian patients are different from the patients in the DAP study. We have, think we have to bear in mind that the DAP study had no Asian sites. Um, we know from other studies that Asian patients, for whatever reason, are a little bit more prone to bleeding. And uh, in terms of, you know, there was some stent interaction with the results in the DAP study. And, you know, we, in Asia, we don't use first generation uh, DES anymore. So, you know, how applicable is this? So we don't know. And I think that's exactly what you're saying. How are we going to move forward? You know, do we plan our own study? You know, we have lots of people who are going for PCI. We could possibly do a study. Is that going to be realistic? I'm not sure. Um, but just for the moment, I think what will happen from the DAP study is that I, I think perceptions will change. I think it's going to be very different from what the session showed. I think people are starting to move to a shorter duration of duenti platelets. And I, I think that, that, would be, uh, that seems to be uh, uh, the, the way forward. Can I ask you a question, Thomas? Of course. So, uh, how is the European perspective then, you know, in, in regards to the DAP study? Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting to, yeah. to compare the Asian perspective and the European one because you yeah. say that in Asia, finally, after the DAP, probably yeah. everybody went before for long term and yeah. now maybe for shorter within the next few years. Mm. While, as you know, in Europe, many studies have been conducted yeah. showing that short DAPT is safe after a modern DES, six mm. months and even three months maybe. Yeah. 
And then we have the DAPT study, mm. suggesting a benefit in reduction of stent thrombosis in long-term DAPT. Yep. So it was a little bit against all the European perspective of short-term yep. DAPT after DES. But as we know, there is, in the other side, more bleeding and higher mortality in the long-term DAPT, in the, in the DAPT study. Sure. So I don't think uh, within the next few years uh, the DAPT design will be adopted in Europe. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that we won't keep as short as we did DAPT for all the patients. Right. And we move from same duration for all the patients to more individualized approach yeah. according to both ischemic and bleeding risk, I think. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So thank you very much. Right, thank you very much.